What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Well, I'm in a different background. I'm actually here today at my local craft brewery. The head brewer there, Jason, has actually invited me to teach an introduction to home brewing class uh, today, which is pretty cool. So I'm getting a chance to spread the hobby around to some local folks. Um, super awesome opportunity. Now today we're brewing up a wit beer. While this may not be the optimal beer to teach someone how to brew with due to some complexities in the recipe, um, it certainly is a great beer to explain how beer works and just all of the different facets of it. This is gonna be a little bit of a departure from my previous brew of a wit beer, which I did maybe two or three years ago now at this point. Um, this one's gonna be using a little bit more complicated of a grain uh, bill and also I'm gonna be changing up some of the spices from the one that I made. Uh, the whip beer I made three years ago was outstanding. That was actually one of my favorite beers I've made that entire year. Um, so definitely worth checking out that recipe if you're curious. Whip beer is honestly a very old style of beer, but it's one of my favorites. And it's a very important addition to the Belgian beer series because it's a very unique beer. It's a really nice, refreshing, low alcohol beer with lots of citrus character, tons of wheat character, a nice full bodied, smooth, creamy mouthfeel. It's a very difficult beer to get perfect, but even if you don't quite nail it, it is a very good beer nonetheless, and it's a very forgiving one. Um, it harkens back to the time where hops weren't really a main ingredient in beer brewing, but spices were. Spices were originally used instead of hops to balance out some of the sweetness uh, in the beers that were produced in that time. Great examples of wood beer include Hogarden, which is pretty much the original, uh, also Alaskan White, uh, Allagash White, and Salis White. Typically, you're gonna see some kind of inclusion of citrus, typically orange, uh, and some sort of other spice, like coriander is very common. I'll be using grains of paradise today, uh, as well as some coriander to kind of add a little bit of complexity in that front. So before we get into a recipe, I just wanna say thank you to a couple organizations for helping make the video possible. Firstly, Northern Brewer, where you can find all the ingredients that you need to make this batch of beer, uh, including the spices actually. So do check them out for some ingredients and equipment. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply. Uh, they are the manufacturers of the system that I have been brewing with for about two years now. A great manufacturer with both 10 and 20 gallon and 120 and 240 volt options for your electric brew house. I'm sure you know about their YouTube channel as well. So for our recipe, we're gonna be starting out with five pounds of Belgian Pilsner malt. I'm using Dingemans today. On top of that, we're gonna be adding a ton of very high protein grains, starting out with two and a half pounds of flaked wheat. And then on top of that, we're adding one pound of flaked oats, just giving a little bit of additional creaminess to it. And we're adding one pound of red malted wheat uh, because I've heard that that produces a very interesting flavor and I'm kind of hoping that that can come through. And then also we're adding a pound and a half of spelt malt to the whole thing. Very high protein malt um, that has also a curious flavor. And that's that kind of experimental thing that I'm trying to play with here, but it should be very interesting to see what happens. I've never actually brewed with spelt before, uh, but I've heard a lot of good things. And then of course, we'll be adding a pound of rice hulls to this whole thing because that's a lot of protein. We're gonna really want to ensure that we have rice hulls in there to help uh, facilitate the mash. For the hops on this one, very, very simple. We're just adding two ounces of Styrian Goldings at 60 minutes, just enough to get us about 17 IBUs of bitterness, uh, and that's all you need. It's not a very hoppy beer at all. It's indeed a very malty one. Um, the star of the show should be the yeast and also the spices that we are adding. And on that note, we are adding spices to this at the five minute mark. Um, not as much as the Christmas beer that I made not too long ago, um, nothing like that. But we are adding two grams of paradise seeds. These are this really cool spice that's very reminiscent of coriander, um, but also has a very powerful pepper kind of character as well. It's kind of a cross between like a lemon flavor and a black peppercorn. Um, on top of that, we're adding three grams of ground coriander and then the entire zest of one orange, which is uh, quite a bit actually, um, but it should really come through in a very nice way. I used fresh orange zest in my last wit beer that I made a couple years ago, and it turned out really, really well. For the water in this one, this is actually interesting. I'm not using any sort of adjusted water in this one. We're actually using the brewing water here. So I just went off of their hot liquor tank. Um, it's a triple filtered water. Should be relatively close to RO water. Um, I'm not adding anything to it because wood beer is a very delicate beer. It's a very balanced beer. 
there's really no need to push for extra chlorides or extra sulfates on this anyway. So it works out well. They don't need to worry about water treatments in this beer. Um, if you were looking for something similar, try using like a spring water base um, and then work with that. For the yeast on this beer, I'm using Imperial B44 Whiteout. Uh, this is their wit beer strain, and it's the same wit beer strain that pretty much everybody else has. I'm just gonna kind of curious to see if Imperial's version of it's gonna be any different than the Y yeast one that I used before. Um, but plenty of different options here. We'll talk about this more in the fermentation section, but Imperial's version of it is what I'm using today. So for our mash here, I'm going for a 60 minute single infusion mash at about 154 Fahrenheit. Should get us where we need to be in terms of mouthfeel and in terms of sugar extractions. Um, other than that, there's not too much else to talk about, so let's get into it. I was actually using the 120 volt system today because there were no 240 volt dryer plug type outlets at the brewery, so we were limited to 120 volts. So I started out by tapping into the brewery's hot liquor tank and adding in eight gallons of hot water from there. The hot liquor tank is already heated up to about 160 degrees, so we actually just let it cool down to the mash temperature of 154 prior to going in. I actually milled all of my grist using the brewery's mill uh, as well, which was convenient, although the crush settings were a little different than what I'm used to, which is actually one reason why we ended up getting a slightly lower original gravity than planned. Once I had crushed all my malt, I also added in my flaked grains and my rice hulls to the grist and was sure to mix it all up thoroughly. Once we reached the mash temperature of 154, I dowed in with all of that. let the mash sit for about 10 minutes before measuring our pH, uh, which actually ended up being quite high at about 6.06. .06. So I was pretty quick to add about a cap full of lactic acid to the mash to help bring the pH back down to a much more reasonable number. After rechecking five minutes later, it ended up being about 5.5 measured at a hot temperature. After letting the mash sit for an hour, I performed a mash out by raising it up to 170 Fahrenheit, letting it sit for 15 minutes and then pulling out the grain basket and letting that drain for 15 more minutes. While the basket was draining, I ramped the controller up to 100% power to try and get a jump start on the boil. But once I reached the boil, I added my bittering hops, which was two ounces of Styrian Goldings. And then I let the boil continue for 55 more minutes. Uh, I did not add any Whirlflock or nutrient to this beer, as I don't believe it would need either of those items. At the five minute mark, I added my spices. This was the coriander, the crushed paradise seed, and the entire orange peel. Five minutes later, I killed the heat and I began to initiate a whirlpool to pile up all the troub and the spices and all that stuff in the center of the kettle and let it start to clarify the wort. Once this was completed, I began to chill down to my pitching temperature, which I was able to do in one pass through the plate chiller. On the way out, I recorded an original gravity of 1042, which was lower than expected, but I do believe that is due to the uh, different crush on the grain mill. Once I had everything in my fermenter, I went ahead and I pitched my yeast and I left it to ferment. All right, 
right, so I'm back at the house now, and the brew day actually went really, really well. We had a few folks show up, and I think they learned a few things and uh, really enjoyed the class, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, I actually left the fermenter over at the brewery, so that's actually been tucked away in a nice corner that's relatively consistent with the temperature. It's not as precise, I think, as my chest freezer would be, um, but it'll get the job done, and I think it's just fine. Especially this time of year, ambient room temperature, even in the brewery, can actually be cool enough to ferment the beer with. This beer style is a very yeast dependent beer style. You really cannot get a true wit beer character without using wit beer yeast. It is a very specific thing. There are some substitutes you can make and we'll talk about those in a minute, but it really is a very important thing to try your absolute best to use wit beer yeast in this case. So again, I use Imperial Whiteout. But you can get the same thing in Y-Yeast 3944, WLP 400, um, and there's actually a dry wit beer yeast. I didn't realize this until I looked hard enough, and it's uh, Lalamand, again, for the win, with a simple wit. Uh, that's their yeast. So, I'm not sure if these are the same exact strains or where they've been cultivated from. I believe they all came from Ho Garden, but I might be wrong, so don't quote me on that one. Ho Garden, however, is really the definitive example of the style, so I wouldn't be surprised. Now, if you cannot find any of these wit beer yeasts to ferment with, well, then you have to start looking at some substitutions, and this is a tough one. I think your closest substitute is going to be the Belgian Arden strain. This is the Le Chouf strain. You'll find this strain as Y-Yeast 3522 Arden Ale, WLP 550, or Imperial Gnome. Uh, these are all good options to get the same yeast character out. This is gonna be a different character than a wit beer, um, but if you ferment it cool enough, it'll give you kind of a similar result. Um, so it's a decent backup option, I would say. If you really can't find either of those two strains, then your next best bet might be to use a Hefeweizen strain and ferment it kind of on the colder side. Uh, if you do go down that route, it's going to be a far, far closer beer to a Hefeweizen, for obvious reasons, than a wit beer. Um, I do recommend fermenting it cold, though, to keep those banana esters under control. I would not recommend subbing in a Trappist Ale strain. It's gonna be too estery. It's gonna get too much banana in there. It's a similar problem to the Hefeweizen yeast, but at least the Hefeweizen yeast produces enough phenolics to really kind of maybe simulate the Whitbeer experience. So if you can find any of those three strains and you ferment it on the cooler side, 65 to 68 really is the best zone for this, uh, then you'll probably get the character that you need. And one last point on this. Um, I typically am not a proponent of pressure fermentation for a Belgian ale. I like to get all that yeast expression in there, but for a wit beer, a case can be made for pressure fermentation uh, in that, well, maybe we want to actually keep that massive Krausen under control. Maybe we want to lock in some more of those spicy aromatics through external pressure. Um, a mild amount of pressure may not be a bad move here for that reason. Yes, it will also keep the esters under control, but. As I mentioned, we don't really want an estery beer. We want a phenolic kind of character to the beer. Just a small amount though. Just enough to give it that little bit of peppery spiciness that you would expect out of a wit beer yeast without overdoing it. And that's what we want. We don't want the yeast to really get in the way of all the spices that we added. But at the same time, we want a very particular yeast character, and that's what that whipped beer yeast should be delivering. So I'm adding in one packet of Imperial Whiteout. I'm not actually adding a starter. It's a really low original gravity. So just to recap, I pitch one packet of Imperial Whiteout into the fermenter at about 65 degrees, and I'm gonna ferment it at the same, 65 degrees, for probably about two weeks. It might not be a particularly fast fermentation, um, but it will get done in about two weeks. And then I'll package off of that, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys then. So see you in a few weeks. The fermentation on this beer went relatively on schedule. I uh, finished up in about 12 to 14 days. I went back to the brewery after about two weeks to go actually help out brew a full-size batch. At that point, I ended up measuring the final gravity. It turned out to be about 10-12 with temperature correction, which puts us just inside of 4% ABV. At that point, I kicked the beer, got it ready to carbonate, and uh, put it on tap. So the beer is called the Town Wittiet, uh, and it is 4.0% ABV and 15 IBUs. For the appearance of the beer, it pours a really nice, sort of still hazy, very pale yellow color. Uh, with a really brilliant white head on top of it. Very 
very puffy, kind of fluffy, cloudy looking head. Um, really the wheat high protein content here is doing its job in that department. Now it's, it's hazy, but it's definitely not straight up opaque. Um, and that's because I've left this sitting in the keg for a while throughout the entirety of dry January. So um, it has actually kind of almost lagered in a way, but the whipped beer yeast is pretty hesitant to drop out and flocculate. And um, that's one of the reasons why it should be a hazy style. Now, before we get into our full tasting panel, including my wife, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick review. So in the aroma, I get like a very nice soft malt and then also a little bit of like a lemony citrus kind of note. And then maybe a bit of that grains of paradise. Um, so there's a little bit of an herbal note in there as well. All right, let's go in for mouthfeel. Mouthfeel in this one is interesting. Um, it is full, but still light. Um, it's very airy, very pillowy, fluffy. Um, so overall, the mouthfeel, I think, is just pillowy in character, but still very, very light and refreshing. It's not full bodied. It's just got very, very soft edges. Um, it's actually really very pleasant and refreshing and easy, very, very easy to drink. So now let's dive in for flavor. All right, this is a nice, delicate, lightly flavored wheat beer. It's kind of like a, a cream of wheat character. Um, there's a really semi sweet wheat um, that comes through. And then on top of that are layered some lovely lemony citrus notes and a little bit of cracked pepper. I'm getting a really bright citrus character that's mostly uh, lemon, actually. It's, it's got a little bit of orange in it, but it's really dominated by a more lemony type of citrus um, without being tart. Um, and that's interesting. It's, it's not tart at all. The citrus character it should be coming from the yeast, it should be coming from the orange peel that we added, but I really honestly think that this special lemony character is coming from Grains of Paradise, because when I popped one of those in my mouth uh, to sample it, boy, it came out real lemony. It's like a really cool blend of lemon and white pepper. So that is the real flavor dominator here is the Grains of Paradise. And it has a nice hint of that other kind of herbal spice component to it, which is the coriander and the Greens of Paradise. Uh, it's got a little tiny bit of cracked pepper character. It's not spicy though, it's just there as a layer on top, really more of a suggestion, uh, very faint flavor. Um, but overall, the beer itself is mostly a lemony, somewhat herbal character with uh, a really, really nice wheat undertone. This is a very different flavor than the wheat beer that I made two or three years ago, which had more orange character to it and a little bit more spice component because I added cardamom in there. This one's really throwing almost like a lavender chamomile character, like a floral component now that it's warming up a little bit. And uh, that's really cool as well. Um, it's a very expressive beer and at 4%, it's really easy to drink and really, really refreshing. Um, and I know it's winter and they don't really have all that need of a light refreshing beer all the time, but it's sometimes so nice to have that on tap. So now let's go see what somebody else thinks about it. Um, I thought it'd be kind of cool to give everybody kind of some extra outside uh, opinion on how the beer turned out. So we got a couple extra tasters here than usual. So uh, first of all, we have Rick. He is the head brewer at Mexitali Brick Oven Brew House here in York, Pennsylvania. And my sister, Karen, who has appeared on the channel way back when. If you are a true fan, you remember that video. <laughs> yeah, so that we are here uh, with the Whit Beer. And so if you guys want to go ahead and uh, let me know what you think about the beer. Smells good. I'm getting some like citrusy, like lemon smell to it. I mean, I get the I get some orange peel in it. I'm not getting a whole lot of coriander. These spice beers, <clears throat> any kind, are just like the, the most difficult kind of beers to make. And I, just in my personal experience, it takes a number of times to make them before you can dial in those spices to. Yeah. You know, and, and here you've got three different spices that you're working with. I'd, I'd increase the uh, the orange a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But you, yeah. and you use fresh peel though. Yes. As opposed to like grated dried peel. That's right. Yeah, so that, that now, could, with, that's gonna make a difference too. Would the dried make it a little more concentrated, bring out that orange flavor? And pe peel a lot of times will get, add that 
a little bit more bitterness to it. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking too, because when I tasted this myself, I thought it needed more fruit character, or more yeah. citrus character, yeah. but it's got the lemoniness like said, from the spice. It's got a nice, I like the tart, the lemony kind of, that's yeah. interesting, I didn't really expect that in a wit beer. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice little haze on it. Mm -hmm. Looks like a wit beer. I'd say that there's an enough, enough body to it. I wouldn't add much more okay. because it seems to be kind of a light, easy drinking beer. Yeah, it only comes mm -hmm. in at 4%, so it's okay. pretty low ABV okay. too. I know mm -hmm. you mentioned yeah. about the spelt yep. and all. I, I wouldn't change that at all. I think it's good. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I agree. All right. I Thank like you. it. Yeah, it's perfect. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. I get orange. I definitely get a ton of orange. Do you get orange? Yeah. yeah. Orange. orange. I, I, I get the coriander. The orange. But I hate to say this. It tastes like the white part of the orange to okay. me. No, mm. that's... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what I'm tasting. It's like that. It's like a little bit bitter of that part. Like kind of, yeah. So once I finished filming, I actually realized I forgot to talk about the potential improvements on this beer. Uh, and while it's a really good beer, there's always option for improvement. So I went ahead and I poured myself a little four ounce glass of uh, the same beer. The list is really, really short because um, I really do like this beer so much, but it does have a balance problem. And the, uh, the real issue is that there's too much Grains of Paradise character and not enough orange character. So when it comes down to it, I would look at this as how do I balance the two? Does that mean less Grains of Paradise, less Coriander and more orange peel or just more orange peel? And I think the answer is actually just more orange peel because I really, really like the Grains of Paradise character. Um, would I add any additional spices into this? Potentially. Um, I've seen a lot of people that have commented on my old Whitbeer video uh, talking about how they're brewing it with chamomile tea. Um, and I think it would actually work really, really well. So adding in some either regular chamomile or chamomile tea to the whole thing might make a really interesting character that would actually balance very, very well with the rest of the flavors in this beer. And then the only other thing is maybe, uh, maybe I would adjust the recipe just to add one more percent ABV. Um, so 4% is great, uh, but it does feel very light. And that's definitely a personal preference thing. And while I could say just add a couple more pounds of Pilsner malt or whatever, uh, the real issue is that my efficiency was so low for this particular beer because I used a different mill. It affected the crush significantly, uh, which meant that I ended up with a lower overall efficiency. So I think if you're crushing your own grain on your own mill, this probably isn't going to yield a 4% beer for you. It might be a little bit higher at about 5%. With that in mind, those are my potential improvements for the beer. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please go ahead, hit that like button before you leave, comment down below and subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, if you want to support the channel, I have a great number of ways to do that. You can order some merchandise like this hoodie, also several t-shirts, uh, many different designs. You should be able to find those in my merchandise store, which is linked in the description box, but also should be visible below the description box. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon supporters are really, really helpful in keeping this channel moving forward and making some really nice production upgrades. So thank you so much, patrons, for your support. I also have channel memberships, uh, and also there's a super thanks button if you feel inclined to hit that every little thing helps a lot and I really appreciate it I also have an Amazon store where you can find some of the equipment that I use to brew with if you're curious about that sort of thing if you want to follow me on more than just YouTube I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook as the apartment brewer so check those links out as well for if you're curious about some more frequent content and last but certainly not least if you are still here thank you thank you thank you all for watching all the way to the end it means a lot to me I put a lot of hard work into these videos and not everybody goes all the way to the end so it means a lot that you're still here. So, until the next one, cheers. You gotta smell it first. Oh yeah, pinky up. Is this right?
Yeah, put your nose in it. Like, make sure it goes up your nostrils. <laughs> What'd you put in this? Tastes like poop. Oh yeah. Best beer ever. <laughs> Best beer ever.